Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Friendly Friday, a weekly series where we take a look at budget-friendly, standard or modern decks, and this week we're taking a look at Mono Red Dragons in Modern, a deck that's looking to ramp into all sorts of dragons and has a lot of dragon synergies. So let's dive right into it here, starting out with our one drops, where we have four copies of Lightning Bolt, one mana to deal three damage to any target at instant speed, so we make sure we don't die to an aggressive start from an opposing creature deck. We also have four copies of Draconic Roar, which for two mana deals three damage to a creature at instant speed, and we can also reveal a dragon from our hand as an additional cost when we cast the Draconic Roar, and if we do we also get to deal three damage to that creature's controller. We also have four copies of Dragon Lord's Servant, a two mana 1-3 Goblin Shaman, that says dragon spells we cast cost one generic mana less to cast, so it makes for a nice little ramp spell for our dragons, while also providing a 1-3 body which can help us protect our planeswalker, and can also just help us protect our life total. Then we also have four copies of Dragon's Horde, a three mana artifact from M19, that taps to add one mana of any color to our mana pool, so helps us ramp into our more expensive dragons, and whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under our control, we can put a gold counter on Dragon Sword, and then we can tap the Dragon Sword and remove a gold counter to draw a card, so also makes for a nice card advantage engine. Then another important addition from M19 is Sarkhan Fireblood, a 3 mana planeswalker that starts at 3 loyalty, has 2 different plus 1 abilities, the first one lets us discard a card and if we do we get to draw a card, so helps us loot and gives us a bit of card selection, and the second plus 1 ability helps us ramp into our dragons by adding 2 mana of any color to our mana pool that we can spend on casting dragon spells, and then a minus 7 that makes 4 5 5 red dragon creature tokens with flying, which also works nicely with our dragon sword. Next up we have our first dragon, at 4 mana we have Thunderbreak Regent, a 4 mana 4-4 four, four flyer that says whenever a dragon we control becomes a target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, Thunderbreak Regent deals 3 damage to that player, so helps us protect our dragons by punishing the opponent from targeting our dragons with spot removal spells and other abilities. Then we also have 4 copies of Glorybringer at 5 mana, for a 4-4 four, four flying haste creature that we can exert, and if we do we get to deal 4 damage to target a non-dragon creature an opponent controls, and if we exert a Glorybringer it's not going to untap in our next untap step. Next up we have a Scourge of Valkas, which is very synergistic in our dragon deck, as a 5 mana 4-4 four, four flying dragon, that says whenever Scourge of Valkas or another dragon enters the battlefield under our control, it deals X damage to any target where X is the number of dragons we control, and Scourge of Valkas also has fire breathing, so for every red mana we get to give Scourge of Valkas plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. Then we get to our more expensive dragons, we have two copies of Lathless Dragon Queen, a 6 mana 6-6 six, six legendary dragon with flying, and whenever another non-token dragon enters the battlefield under our control, we get to make a 5-5 five, five red dragon creature token with flying, and for every two mana we can give all our dragons plus one power until end of turn. And then last but not least we have two copies of Udvara Hellkite, an 8 mana 6-6 six, six flying dragon that says whenever a dragon we control attacks, we get to make a 6-6 six, six red dragon creature token with flying. So ideally we already have a dragon in play before we play Udvara Hellkite, so we get that token right away. And of course those tokens also synergize nicely with Scourge of Valkas and Dragon's Horde. And then the mana base in this deck is very straightforward, we have 4 copies of Zelfurn Void, which enters the battlefield untapped and lets us scry 1 when it enters the battlefield, giving us a little bit more card selection, and then 20 basic mountains. Then taking a look at the sideboard, we have 3 copies of Relic of Progenitus against Graveyard decks, an Alpine Moon against Scapeshift and Tron decks, 2 copies of Damping Sphere against Tron and Storm decks and other combo decks, 2 Abrades for more creature removal or against artifacts, 3 copies of Dragon's Claw against Burn decks and other aggro decks, then 2 copies of Anger of the Gods as a cheap sweeper that also exiles creatures, so great against certain graveyard strategies, and finally 2 copies of Magus of the Moon against decks that rely too much on their non-basic lands, this is our budget replacement for Blood Moon. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and this hand seems okay, we don't have the Dragon yet, but we have lots of cheap removal plus Sarkhan, so we can protect our Sarkhan pretty well, and Sarkhan can help us look for dragons. And I think we still lead with Mountain, so we can potentially bolt on one instead of playing the Zelfren Void, since we don't exactly know what we're looking for. To 
turn one dried militant, so maybe a green stompy aggro deck. Should be a decent matchup for us, I think. Although, I guess a 10 10 Gigantosaurus is pretty difficult to deal with. Bottom the mountain. Avatar of the Resolutes. We're gonna Draconic Roar. Don't have a dragon to reveal, sadly. Alright, Scourge of Valkas, excellent draw. Let's play Sarkon. And I could discard a mountain here since we already have 5 mana for Scourge. So I think that's reasonable. Since we're mostly looking for more dragons here. And we found a land anyway. So ideally your opponent plays a creature that dies to Scourge. Like this experiment one. A Rancor, that's fine. Alright, so Scourge can kill experiment one. And we get another turn of Sarkon activations. And next turn we can probably discard the second Sarkon. Opponent stuck on two lands, so that's uh, where we want to be. Dried Militant is going to die to any other dragon we find. Or we can Draconic Roar it. Udvara Hellkite. We're uh, two mana short of Udvara Hellkite. So let's discard Sarkon. And another Draconic Roar, I guess that'll do. Reveal our Hellkite. Spoiler alert. And then pump our Scourge twice. Attack for six. And our opponent scoops it up. Alright, so we're up against a green aggro stompy deck. So just want our cheap removal here, I think. A braid. And Anger of the Gods. Don't think we need anything else. What do we cut? Hellkite's probably a bit ambitious if they have a fast start. And could see shaving a Lathless. Maybe even both. Could maybe also cut a Dragon's Horde. Sarkon on the draw might also be a bit weaker since they get to get off to a fast start. I think I'll try with this configuration one fewer Sarkon since we might not be able to protect them that well. Alright, this hand does not have a lot of interaction but we could potentially cast a pretty early Lathless, which might be good enough, so I think I'll try it. And then look for cheap removal spells with the Zalfern Void or 5 mana dragons. So I'm fine playing the Void on 1 here. And Sarkon is something, but I don't think Sarkon's gonna cut it this game. Since again, we don't have a lot of cheap removal to protect him, and the Servants are gonna be outclassed pretty soon. So I don't think Sarkon's gonna do much for us. If we had a start with... A Lightning Pulse and a Braids and maybe Anger of the Gods, then Sarkon looks a lot better. At least the Servant blocks the Militant pretty well. And her opponent stuck on one land, alright, that's uh, definitely gonna help. So turn two Servants, and we're looking at a turn for Scourge of Valkas, which is pretty decent here. Avatar of the Resolute is pretty big as well, and it does have reach, so it can block our dragons potentially. So we'll take three from Experiment 1. Anger of the Gods would still be excellent here. Instead, a Dragon Sword, which is still fine. Probably better than playing the Servants. So let's play another Zalfren Void. Bottom, another Zalfren Void. Play Dragon Sword. Say go. And then hope uh, they don't get to add more to the board. Don't exactly know how aggressive the opponent's deck is and how high their curve is if they're including cards like Leatherback, Baloth and Gigantosaurus, or if they're lower on the curve. At least Dried Militant dies to Scourge of Alcas next turn. Alright, looks like our opponent accidentally skipped through their attack step, so we will pretend like we're at 8 life, so if they get us below 7 life, then we will concede. So we could play Lathless here if we wanted to, maybe that's better than playing Scourge of Alcas here. Yeah, maybe. Since a 6-6 blocks Avatar pretty well, and if we get to untap with Lathless, then we probably win the game. Is that better than playing Scourge, which just kills a Dried Militant and trades for Avatar? I think I like playing Lathless here. So we're at a virtual 8 life here, so hopefully they don't have a bunch of pump spells like Aspect of Hydra. Instead of Stranglerood Geist, that's beatable. And does our opponent attack? Just a Geist. Alright, I'm fine blocking the Geist. 
Don't really want to take two damage and go to six. And then next turn we get to unload. And a cool synergy between Scourge of Valkas and Lathless is that it's not on cast, but on enters the battlefield. So the extra dragon token we get will also trigger Scourge of Valkas. This costs us four mana, this costs us three mana, one mana short of doing both. So yeah, let's go Servant into Scourge. And our opponent has seen enough, so we would have been able to kill two of the opponent's creatures and then have a bunch of dragon tokens from Lathless, and our opponent was not going to get past those. All right, also managed to beat Mono Green Stompy onto the next one. All right, we're on the play. And how about this one? It's pretty land heavy. The Zelfren Void can help us look for a threat to go with our servant, so it's not a terrible hand to keep, but we can probably do better at six, I think. All right, I guess I'll keep. This one's missing the ramp element, so we'll be looking for some ramp cards to go with our glory bringers. Bottom the mountain and play the Zelfren Void. And do we want a Thunderbreak Regent? It's tempting since it's a play we can make on turn four, but with double Glorybringer in hand, we would much rather find Sarkhan, Servant, or Dragon Sword. So I think we're bottoming. Opponent with a suspended search for tomorrow, so our opponent's on a red green scape shift. Which means this is all about speed. And right now we're lacking the ramp cards to speed us up. So we're probably gonna die before we get to kill our opponent here. We might even die before we get to resolve a glory bringer, although that's not super likely. There's a Valakut. At least they didn't have any turn two ramp card. All right, so we're not finding the ramp cards we were looking for. Thunderbreak Regent would have been better than the cards we've drawn so far. All right, there's a Dragon Sword. I guess better late than never. So next turn we get to play Glorybringer and draw a card from the Dragon Sword at least. But our opponent could be casting Primeval Titans pretty soon. They are missing the second green source, which could be relevant. Ooh, Lathless is tempting. Since if we play Lathless, then next turn Glorybringer would make a token alongside her. So that's probably worth it here. Put a gold counter on the Dragon Sword. And Lathless plus Dragon Sword is also a nice combo. Alright, let's see if our opponent has a Primeval Titan. If they do, then they can kill our Lathless here with the double Valka trigger, since they're on all mountains. Yep. Well, we're gonna need to draw a Lightning Bolt or Draconic Roar here to help us kill Primeval Titan. Udvara Hellkite doesn't quite do it here. We're one mana short. So let's draw, and just a land. Well, we're attacking anyway. Might as well. So let's see if they have the escape shift to kill us here. They get double Valakut, so now any mountain deals 12 damage. And there's a mountain. So let's see if they go after the Glorybringer or if they ignore it. They do go after Glorybringer. Puts us to eight and just a mountain to draw. So we could play the Hellkite, but that doesn't do much since we would die to the Primeval Titan attack. So we'll have to draw, hope to find a cheap removal spell to go alongside the Glorybringer. Did not find it. So now our opponent can attack, look for a few mountains and then just kill us. All right. So let's go to sideboarding, where we get to bring in our Alpine Moon, our Magus of the Moon, and that's it. So not the deepest sideboard. Blood Moon, of course, would be better than Magus, since Magus can die to Lightning Bolts and other random burn spells. What do we take out? Draconic Roar is pretty poor. Uh, is there anything else we could consider? I guess cycling a relic could be more relevant than Draconic Roar, but Draconic Roar plus Glorybringer could kill 
a uh, primeval titan so i think we still keep it even though it's not ideal and then mulligan for our sideboard cards pretty aggressively would like to be on the play and the sand's quite slow no ramp too many five mana dragons it's not gonna cut it all right i'll keep this no sideboard cards but we do have the scry on zalfron void and two ramp cards in case we do find a dragon and make us is perfect that's the card we want so turn two servants plus Alvern Void, turn three either Sarkon or Magus. Don't have to play the Magus as soon as possible, but we do want to get it down before the opponent starts dealing damage with Valakuts. Turn one search again. And we do want to make sure to play the Zalfern Void before the Magus, otherwise we don't get the scry. Bottom the land. Play servants, say go. So we are probably going to go with Sarkon next turn instead of Magus. Put on bolts the, the Servants, that's fine. I'd much rather have them bolt the Servant than Magus. So we'll play Sarkon. And I don't even think we have to discard anything since I like all the cards in hand. And we'll say go. Since next turn we can go land, make two mana with Sarkon, play Lathless. And there's an explore. Pwn can play an additional land. And they're already up to five. Alright, so they could play Primeval Titan next turn. Which is definitely an argument for playing the Megas of the Moon instead of Lathless here. Since otherwise they can search up two mountains and then they could still kill Lathless here. So I guess we're just playing the Megas here. And then we can loot with Sarkon. But I don't even think we want to discard anything. Since Thunderbreak region is pretty decent. Could make the argument for finding another hate card in case Magus dies. But we do need to keep some dragons to close out the game. Alright, no bolt, that's good. And our opponent did not search up any green mana with their search for tomorrow. So they can't even cast Primeval Titan. Alright, Dragon's Horde could be okay, so we could... Dragon's Horde, make two mana, play Thunderbreak, or we can just play Lathless straight up, which is probably better. And attack for two. Alright, if we can dodge a bolt on the Magus for a turn or two here, then we should be fine. Alright, opponent does nothing, still does nothing. Alright, so I think it's time to go Dragon's Horde into Thunderbreak Regent here, since we can deal lethal. Can only pump twice, so that's 8, 10. Um, but I guess we'll loot first, in case we can find an Alpine Moon here. Instead we find a Lightning Bolt, does that change anything? Not really. So let's play the Thunderbreak. Trigger a Lathless. Attack for 8. Opponent could still win if they can get rid of the Magus and then cast a Scapeshift with 8 lands in play. But it's gonna take a lot. And they don't have it. Awesome. So managed to steal game 2 here against a red-green Scapeshift. How do we adjust for game 3? Don't think we can change much. Again could make the case for Relic, since it cycles. Can maybe help us find Magus or Alpine Moon. Is that better than Draconic Roar? Maybe. But I think I still like the Lightning Bolts for closing speed. So our opponent's probably bringing in a ton of answers for Magus of the Moon now. So it's going to be less reliable than it was in Game 2. Even though our opponent did still keep in their Lightning Bolts. On the bright side, if our opponent brings in hate cards for Magus of the Moon, it's less likely that they'll have enchantment removal for Alpine Moon. So if we get lucky, we might sneak in a win with Alpine Moon. Alright, how about this one? We do have a turn 3 Thunderbreak Regent, which is decent. We could mulligan to look for our sideboard cards. I think I'm gonna try keeping this just to see if we can get there the fair way. And if our opponent is mulliganing to look for answers for Magus, then we might be more likely to get there just by casting an early dragon. Opponent did mulligan to 5, and for once they don't have the turn 1 search. Alright, even if they kill the servant it's okay since we have double dragon sword. 
to help us ramp, but ideally we stick a turn 3 Thunderbreak. So the fact their opponent didn't fetch means that they're land light, but now that they did find a second land, they might play a 2 mana ramp spell here, and like the Sakura Tribe Elder, which we can block with our servants, so their opponent's not gonna get in those 3 points of damage. Alright, a second servant could be useful. But at this point we're mostly looking for finishers, so more 5 and 6 mana dragons. Opponent sacrifices Elder right away. Also didn't see any Bloodbraid Elves from the opponent, some scapeshift decks like to run Bloodbraid Elf. Instead an Explorer. Alright, opponent's not really stumbling much for having Mulligan to 5. And Farseek, so they could already be casting Primeval Titan next turn, which is uh, definitely an issue. Alright, more Servants. Well, we're just casting a turn 3 Thunderbreak Regent and attacking for 1. So now the hope is that their hand does not have a payoff card. And yep, there's a Bloodbird Elf, which finds Search for Tomorrow. Gets them up to 6 mana. And their opponent made sure to get those Forests now to play around Magus of the Moon. No attacks from the Bloodbraid. And Udvara Hellkite, that's exciting. So we can go Dragon Sword into Servant and next turn potentially play the Hellkite. Alright, we've got a plan here. Opponent's down to 8. Say go. We don't really need the Udvara Hellkite necessarily, but it would be nice to get it in play, since that might be able to beat Primeval Titan. Opponent casts Summoner's Pack to go get Primeval Titan. But given the two forests, they won't be able to deal any damage with Valakuts this turn. And next turn they're gonna be forced to pay for the Pact, so they can't do anything else too relevant. So they get double Valakuts. Next turn when they attack with Primeval Titan, they can get two mountains, which deal a total of 12 damage. And we drew the mountain, alright. Time to play with Vara Hellkite, I think. And attack with Thunderbreak Regent, make a dragon, and hope that's good enough. We could definitely die to escape shift since their opponent still has the mana to cast both escape shift and pay for the pact. But they don't have a ton of cards in hand, and they are at 4 life, facing quite a few dragons. Primeval Titan is attacking. If they deal damage to our dragons, they would die to the Thunderbreak region triggers, and we can just block Primeval Titan if we want to. So their opponent gets Valakut plus Mountain, so they get to deal 9 damage here. And they're going face, so if they have another ramp spell, we could take another 9 damage here. Definitely blocking Primeval Titan with all our dragons, I think. I guess we could only block with the dragon token, keep the Atvar Hellkite around. Don't really see a reason not to double block here. Opponent trades for the Hellkite. Opponent casts another Summoner's Pact. Get Sakura Tribe Elder, which can be sacrificed to get another Mountain, which would deal 9 damage here. They're going face, so if they have a Lightning Bolt here, we could be dead. Instead, they had a Windswept Heath as well. Alright, super close here. Opponent gets another Mountain for the last 9 points of damage. So almost got there against the Scapeshift deck, our opponent had a pretty decent draw for a mulligan to 5 there. So on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. And on the draw I think we can keep this hand. We've got self and Void to help us look for the third land. And Dragon Sword helps us play Thunderbreak Regent. So we don't need a ton of help to get there. And Draconic Roar for early interaction is also nice. Turn 1 Blood Crypts, untapped. Could be a Mardu deck, could be... A uh, Hollow One deck could be the new Kid on the Block, the Vengevine deck, and yep, looks to be the case. Alright, could be in trouble here. Play Mountain, say go. So this is where the Relics and the Anger of the Gods in the sideboard are gonna have to do a lot of work. 
Viserys here. Into a walking ballista that dies right away to get back Vengevine. Fair enough. I think we're killing the Vengevine here. Opponent gets to sacrifice with the Seer to scry. And our opponent plays another Ballista that goes to the graveyard right away. I'm not sure why, since it doesn't get back the Vengevine. Right, it's a Scry with Zelfren Void. Look for a third land, keep that on top, say go. Don't think we need to Draconic Roar the Viscera Seer. Doesn't really bother me at the moment. And it's not a zombie, so they can't cast a Gravecrawler out of the graveyard with it. Alright, opponent just passes, not even attacking with the Viscera Seer. Do we Draconic Roar now? I guess that might be okay. Revealing Thunderbreak Regents. Untap. Play Dragon's Horde. And then next turn we can play the Regent. Bone does get to flashback a Faithless Looting next turn. So if we draw land we get to Scourge, if we don't we get to Thunderbreak Regent. Bone flashing back Looting. Discards double Vengevine, that's scary. But luckily they don't have two zero drops in hand that they can play here. Like Walking Ballista or Hanger Back Walker. Alright, Thunderbreak Regent it is. Insolent Neonate. Creature number one. Do they have a second creature? They do. Another Neonate. Get back Triple Vengevine. Yeah, that's an issue. Not sure if we can block here or if we have to take 12. I think we would much rather face a bridge from below than Vengevine, since bridge we can kind of deal with with our Scourge of Valkas, but a 4-3 Vengevine is a lot uh, more difficult to deal with. So if we block, we take 8, get rid of one Vengevine for a turn, next turn play another Regent perhaps, or a Scourge. If we take 12, then next turn Scourge only deals 2 damage still. I think we have to block since I don't think we can out race, since if we take 12 down to 8, 4 plus maybe 2 is still only 6. Yeah. Alright, land was good. Since now we get to Scourge. And Scourge into Scourge can definitely deal some damage. And we get to take out a Neonate, I guess. Probably more relevant than dealing 1 damage to your opponent. Opponent discards a Haunted Dead. So hopefully they can't return Vengevine next turn. Stitcher Supplier, creature number one. Mills them for three. Mills double Hanger Backwalker. And Gravecrawler can come back from the graveyard now since this is a zombie which returns the third Vengevine and now we're in chum block mode. Alright, so now we're pretty dead. Alright, so their opponent had a few missteps along the way, but they got there nonetheless. They did need to have those three Venge Vines in the top fourth of their deck, which was lucky, but otherwise it would have been a bridge from below making a bunch of zombie tokens. Uh, so can we do anything here? Nope, I don't think so. Alright, so let's go to game two here, where we do get to bring in some sideboard cards. So we get to bring in three Relics and two Angers. Is there anything else we want? Could make a case for Makers of the Moon to mess with the opponent's mana but they can still cast Faithless Looting and all their colorless spells through the Magus. I don't think Magus is amazing and don't have time for Hellkite. Probably have to take out Lathless and I could see cutting a Sarkon as well. Try something like this. Would like to be on the play and don't think we can keep this hand. No Relic, no Anger and not a particularly explosive draw. Alright, I mean, we do have the Relic but the rest of our hand's pretty bad. But I don't think I want to go to 5, so I think I'll keep. But I'm not super happy about it. Since Relic, while it's okay against the opponent's deck, it's definitely not game over. So they can fight through it. So hopefully we can find a land with our Scry. Glorybringer goes on the bottom. And turn 1 Relic. No turn 1 play from the opponents. Alright, Mountain was a good draw. So I really want to find a third land for Sarkon here. Alright, opponent kept a one lander. Alright, we'll just say go here. Opponent's still not doing anything, they have to discard to hand size now. So we did not get a chance to use a relic end of turn there. Uh, but land is good. 
So we'll activate Relic now. Play Sarkhan. I could see discarding Thunderbreak Regent here, since we can just go double Scourge. But by playing Thunderbreak Regent, we get to keep up a Relic, which could be relevant. So I think I'll discard Scourge instead. Keep the Bolt in case we need to answer Avengevine. So it's a bit sketchy that we're tapped out of Relic, but our opponent wasn't doing much, so... Discards a Nature's Claim. Let's add mana to play a Scourge. Deal one to the opponents. And then activate Relic. And say go. Keeping up Relic activation and Lining Bolt. Opponent's still not doing anything. Discards a Haunted Dead. And then we can play Servants. Plus Arkan for mana. Play Thunderbreak Regent while keeping up one mana. And deal two damage to the opponent. And then just attack for four. Not gonna use the Fire Breathing here on Scourge. Since we want to keep up a Relic and Bolt. And next turn our opponent should be pretty dead. Since we can just double Bolt him as well. And opponent finally finds a second land. Let's see what they can do through a Relic. They'll start with a Looting. Discarding double Vengevine. Alright, they're definitely trying. And our opponent scoops it up. Alright, so we got game two here. Got pretty lucky that our opponent was missing their second land drop for a while. Which gave us time to set up. I uh, still don't think we change anything. And how about this hand? Do have a turn 3 Thunderbreak Regent, potentially turn 4 Glorybringer, but I don't think that's good enough, especially on the draw. Really needs either Relic or Anger. Well, do we keep this? It's a functional hand, turn 2 Servant, turn 3 Dragon Sword, turn 4 Scourge. And if we go to 5, we risk having a hand that doesn't do anything. So I guess I'll keep, but I'm not happy about it. Bottom the land. So our opponents might get to do their graveyard shenanigans this time around. Well, no turn to play. Play a servant. Maybe they kept a hand with a bunch of nature's claims and destructive rivalries. So far so good, I guess. Sarkhan. I think we play Sarkhan over Dragon's Horde, since my guess is that they probably have a few ways of uh, dealing with the Dragon's Horde. Could have kept the Servant back in case of a hasty bushwhacker. But I think that's fine. So we'll play Sarkhan, discard a land. And say go. And there's a bushwhacker. Right, can uh, attack Sarkhan for two. That's fine. So let's play a Zelfran Void, get a Scry, get a bit more info. Thunderbreak region's okay, not amazing. I think we can do better. We can play Dragon's Horde. Add two mana. And still play Scourge, thanks to our servants. And then ping the Bushwhacker for one, I guess. And attack for one. Well, we might be doing it here. Opponent's not really functioning. And we can just curve out and play a bunch of Scourges. Which should be better than Venge Vines at this point. All right, Nature's Claim on the Dragon Sword as we expected. That's fine. And another Zalfran Void, which we will play before we discard with Sarkhan. Still looking for Relic and Anger of the Gods, mostly. But more dragons are welcome. Bolt can go. Discard Mountain. Find a Mountain. Play a Scourge. And ping our opponent for 4 here. I guess when we're dealing 4 damage it's no longer pinging, but it's more like dinging. Well, our opponent is facing lethal damage next turn. Don't think they can deal 24. There's a Neonate. Discards Vengevine. So their opponent can probably get back Vengevine here, since they just need to cast one of their 0 mana creatures. And a Bridge from Below as well. Alright, so they can also make some zombies. And two Venge Vines coming back, thanks to Hangar Backwalker, but uh, our dragons are still going to be able to fly over for the win. So the first siding of Bridge from Below. Very weird card, but essentially makes a 2-2 zombie token whenever one of their creatures dies. 
And Vangevine's going face, that's fine. We'll take it. Untap, and a Thunderbreak Regent is a nice cherry on top. Can deal 6 damage to our opponent here, with the two Scourge of Valkas triggers. And then we can attack for a win. Could still discard and draw with Sarkon here, but not gonna waste any more time. Alright, sweet. So, opponent got a bit unlucky in the second and third game here. But sometimes these graveyard decks give up a bit of consistency to have these very explosive starts. And we kind of saw our opponent struggle here. Alright, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel, and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd, where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel, as well as getting us closer to our goals, where with every goal reached, we will release an additional weekly series. So if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.